Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do some vintage Halloween decor. I absolutely love anything vintage, so I thought this would be a fun video to put together. If you have Instagram, go to Kelly's Creations 18 or check out my Facebook page. So, the first two here I'm just going to show you since I was making these to set my decor on, I thought I would share it with you. So I had made that little round stand a while back and I just want to update it a little bit. And then I had a rectangular piece of wood from Dollar Tree and I thought I would make another stand because I love adding height to my decor and these are just so easy to make. The total cost is $2 from Dollar Tree. So I took some white chalk paint. I added some baking soda to it so it would be thicker consistency and just give it texture. And I went over two candlesticks from Dollar Tree. Then I took my stain and I stained the piece of wood. And the round one you saw at the beginning, I actually had made in a prior DIY and I added beads to it um, or pearls and went over it just to do something different with a stand but you saw the little round circles <laughs> I had removed the beads and now I'm just gonna take this chalk paint mixture and go over it these are so easy to make and there it is look how cute it is I love the textured base and these are perfect for holding our vintage Halloween DIY decor or any other decor. <laughs> so using this Valentine's tag sign from Dollar Tree, um, we're gonna do the first vintage sign. All of these printables are from Graphics Fairy. A couple of them are just pictures I found on Google Images, but most of them did come from Graphics Fairy. And she has a great section, if you go to the website, of Vintage Halloween. So much fun. Oh my gosh, it just took me back in time of being a child. And the decor was so simple and cute. Um, so I thought this would be fun. So I used that same textured paint on the tag. And then I went around the image with Mod Podge to give me kind of like a template of where to put the Mod Podge on the sign. I do use a little bit of water to spray the paper and then I lay it down on the Mod Podge. Now, <laughs> this is printer paper and you have to be really careful with how wet you get it because I did fine here, but I ended up having some water on my fingers and when I went to touch certain spots, it started to run. But that was a happy accident because that made this seem even older than it is. I took a baby wipe and I was trying to kind of blend it, but as you can see it changing right now. Um, it didn't run the ink, but it kind of gave it watermarks. So I ran with it. You know, you got to run with your mistakes and turn them into successes. So I added a little bit of tape, paper towel over it and I just kept playing with it. And it came out so neat. I think it blended it more into it to make it one cohesive piece. And it made it look really old. <laughs> So I had this like ticking stripe little ribbon and I thought I would do some outlining with it. Just putting it a little bit away from the edges and just framing it with the ribbon. But I ran out. <laughs> so I had to grab some different kind of ribbon to do the top, but that's okay. Um, so cute. I am gonna show you guys at the end of this video some vintage Halloween decor I found. And some of these items I used to decorate with when I was little. Oh my gosh, it just brought back so many good memories. The items I'm making, I am making to look vintage. Maybe not necessarily the kind of decor we had when we were little or um, 
you know, I know my mom used to decorate a lot with the cardboard um, that had hinges on it and you can move the arms and legs and stuff. So that was really neat. But I'm just going for a more vintage flair with this. DIY number two is using this little stand from the Dollar Tree and I've had this in my stash and haven't really decided what I wanted to do with it but since this is smaller than some of the other projects I'm making in this video I thought this would be really cute with the other vintage decor and man that tag came off so easy because sometimes I struggle with Dollar Tree <laughs> stickers and again I just printed out a vintage looking little witch flying on her broom oh my gosh so cute perfect size for this little sign and I'm just gonna mod podge it on so I cut it down and I use my nail to kind of go around it and give it an edge um it wasn't working so I grabbed a paintbrush now <laughs> here's a little tip if you grab a paintbrush make sure it's like one that isn't colored my paintbrush handle was blue and when I went around it, it made a blue line going all the way around it. <laughs> That's all right. Um, I just cut around it. So this is really neat for uh, projects like this because it gives it an indent. You can flip it over and see where to cut. And then I just Mod Podged it right on the sign. DIY number three. Okay, so this picture isn't as vintage as the other ones I've chosen for this video. This, I guess, is more have a modern flair to it. I'm just going to show you how easy it is to take a Dollar Tree sign and just print an image and put it in a picture frame. And so easy to do. I chose this image because the moon and the black cat on there reminded me of Halloween decor that I used to, you know, help my mom decorate with when we were little. Um, because it was just simplistic. That cat is just simple. And the orange moon, I think we had orange moon on all of our Halloween decor. <laughs> so I thought this would be a really cute blast from the past picture. And I just cut it out. I put it in the frame. Easy peasy, you're done.
DIY number four. Now, bear with me here. I was editing my video and I saved it um, to continue. I don't know what happened here. I don't know if it was a glitch or what happened, but this segment, this little sign <laughs> part of this video is going to be really wonky. Um, you'll see. So this is just a little bitty, um, oh my gosh, I'm going blank as usual. What is this? Pallet wood. Pallet wood sign. One of the mini ones from Dollar Tree. And I found this image that looked like the man on the moon face. So I put some Mod Podge on the sign. I did not stain it. I kept it natural, which I do in a couple of these. And I put his face right on the pallet wood. Then I took my little tool and went in the gaps and cut it. And then added, flipped it over, added a little Mod Podge to the back to bring the pieces I cut inward. So they kind of wrap around each of the individual pieces of wood. Um, I don't know why I chose this picture. For some reason, this like spoke to me. And <laughs> I don't know, I've seen this before. I just thought this would be cool to put on a little palette. I had some half round wooden beads and I did put a little bit of wood glue on the back with a little bit of hot glue. And I just glued those down to each of the pieces of wood, each of the pieces of the pallet wood. <laughs> so yeah, it's like crooked and off center and I'm not sure what happened here. Some parts are gonna get real big. I don't know what happened with my software, but anyway, I still kept it in the video because it still turned out pretty cute. And I love the little wood accents on the back of these and after I was done, I took some white paint and I went over the edges of this and I went over the wood beads just to kind of blend it into the man on the moon face. <laughs> I'm going to call it that. I'm not exactly sure if that's what it is. I think it is, but I don't know. I just thought this was really cute when it was done and I thought it did look vintage. DIY number five, using another one of those rectangular wood plaques from Dollar Tree and another image. I thought this one was really cute. I'll do a close up and you can see the mom with her daughter in like the spooky woods and this ghost comes out of the trees. But the way the mom is dressed and the costume the daughter, I just, I don't know, it looked really vintage to me. And I thought it would be really cute to make like a rustic country scene. And I did the same thing I did on the first DIY where I wet it and kind of put put watermarks on it and made it look really old. Then I came back in and used my diamond um, nail file to rough up the edges and remove the extra paper. And once I did that, I came back in with some burnt umber and I did not go totally over the black I already had on the edges, but I just kind of mixed the burnt umber in with the black just to make it look older. I love how this one turned out. It is so stinking cute. And if you like vintage rustic country, this is perfect for you. DIY number six. I bought these pumpkins from Dollar Tree a while back and I have been brainstorming what to do with them. So I found these vintage pictures on Graphics Fairy. 
I absolutely love these. And I did not want to paint this pumpkin. Um, so I found images that would coincide with the orange. And I saw somebody else do a DIY with these pumpkins where they actually removed that top piece. So I took a butter knife and went around it and it came off very easy. <laughs> I wasn't worried about the glue that it left because I'm going to be covering it. So then I just played around with what image I want on each side and the center. I wanted to highlight the people in the pictures, so I made sure that I went around and on each side had the people. I used my finger and kind of just made grooves, flipped it over and cut it. Then I did the same thing with the other side. Like I said, I wanted the people more than like the pumpkins and I just sized it, ran my finger around the edge, flipped it over and cut it. Now that's going to be the back of this pumpkin and I, this one and the one at the end are my favorites out of these DIYs. These turned out so cute. They do not look handmade. They look like they were purchased and I absolutely love these pumpkins. So I just kept eyeballing it and one side was a little bit taller than the other. So I lined it up and cut it off at the top and then put it on with Mod Podge. And I was very careful because I didn't want to have watermarks on the front of this one. So I was really, really, really careful <laughs> to not touch the front as, you know, with wet hands. Um, and it worked out perfect. I added Mod, Mod Podge to the back and glued both of these images down. Then I did the same thing with the center piece and Mod Podge a piece to the center and then put it all back together with some hot glue. Once it was dry, I took some Mod Podge and I went over the whole piece to seal it and Mod Podge always gives it like a shinier finish and that's what I was going for here. And it really looks store bought or high end. I'm in love with this piece and if I can figure out how to decorate with it all year, I might not put it away. <laughs> I took the existing bow that was on it and then I took some twine and I just played around with it and I made a twine bow. Then I thought it needed a little bit of pop of color. So I went in my stash of florals from Dollar Tree and just grabbed a couple different flowers to put in the center of this bow.
I love the pictures on this pumpkin. I love the vintage inspiration. I just really, really like the way this turned out. And here it is. DIY number seven, Dollar Tree doesn't sell everything for a dollar anymore. You can get some items for $3 and for $5. And this was a $3 item and it is their larger palette sign and it also has a hanger on it. So I found this gorgeous, absolutely, I'm in love with this picture, gorgeous, <laughs> little girl dressed up as a witch with her cat. So I put it on the pallet wood where her face would be on one piece of wood. Once I had that positioned, I took a pen, flipped it over, and just drew lines so I would know where to cut the paper. But like I said, I made sure that her whole face was on a piece of wood before I did this because I didn't want it splitting on her face. You'll see, it'll make a lot more sense once I flip this back over. <laughs> so I cut the picture into three parts. And then I'm gonna use Mod Podge and I'm gonna put this on the sign. Now this one, um, I kind of just took some chalk paint and went over it. I start in the middle and then work my way to the edges because that's the part you were going to see and I wanted a little of the natural wood to come show through so I'm not too concerned about it being chunkier in the middle because the picture will cover it but I did want it to be white with just a hint of the natural wood showing through once I had that dried then I took a Mod Podge and you can see the slats that are going um up and down on the back of this and the picture fit in between those perfect so I knew where to start with the Mod Podge. So I would just take my brush start with the slat behind the palette and put some Mod Podge down and then start with the top and secure that one and then the next picture in the middle and then the end um, with the last picture until and I was eyeballing it, making sure that the picture totally lined up with each piece that I was putting down. There's no one like you, my little girl. Your eyes so blue under those brown curls. Promise me that you know The world is yours Strike them with your glow Go on now Be good Be fine Live your life Dream big, don't forget It's your life Rocks are meant to be picked off and thrown New ideas can be pleasantly overgrown But you know where to go if you follow How precious is this picture? Oh my gosh, I love this. Uh, I wanted to blend in the paper with the wood. So I came back in with some chalk paint and I just started going back and forth on the edges where um, you could see where the paper meets the wood. And then I came back in a little bit more and kind of dabbed it. And I'm going to be using some larger half rounds um, to put on each each end of each palette piece and I think after doing all of this and then painting those little half rounds um, white it really makes a blend in and it's really hard to see where the picture 
ends are. And I like that. It looks like one cohesive piece. I love this picture. She's just so darling. Oh my gosh. I just use hot glue to secure these little half rounds. And if you are interested, I got them off Amazon and the link is down below if you're interested in checking them out. I bought smaller and a little bit larger ones for projects. Then I came in with a brush that already had paint on it and went over these little half rounds so that some of the natural wood shows through. Look how precious that is. Here it is, guys. DIY number eight. We're going to make a cute little scarecrow box. So using one of these little boxes from Dollar Tree and a printout of a vintage scarecrow pumpkin i'm gonna make a little box sign uh vintage pumpkin patch <laughs> he is so cute i kind of remember having a scarecrow when i was little that looked just like this guy and it was one of those cardboard ones with the hinges and the arms moved and this guy's super cute i thought it would look even better if i cut the image exactly out and didn't have any white so I just trimmed it down so it would fit inside the box. And this time I didn't want to use Mod Podge because I didn't want to have any wrinkles or worry about it getting wet. So I just used a glue stick from the Dollar Tree and just put a bunch of the glue on the back of this picture. Then I put it back in the box and kind of used my finger and my nails to just get it in the creases. Some of the image does come up on the sides, but that's okay. And, oh gosh, this is so cute. I can't wait to show you. You follow that heart. One step at a time. We all play our part. Go on now. Once I had that adorable little guy in place, I grabbed some raffia because that screams hay and what are scarecrows made of? Hay. <laughs> you already knew that, right? I didn't have to tell you. So I just grabbed a bunch of it and tied it in the center and I'm going to do that twice and glue it to each corner of this box. I chose to leave this box natural as well and I did not stain or paint it just because I thought that having it stay natural really would make the image pop more than if I painted it. Um, so yeah, I'm just grabbing raffia in little bundles, kind of like haystacks, and I am gluing it to each corner. I think that just starts making this little box come alive and this little scarecrow guy is so stinking cute so then i burnt the heck out of my fingers <laughs> don't do that um and i also glued some raffia to the bottom of the box dollar tree sold these little mini hay barrels and i thought that would be per perfect for this and i just hot glued them going different directions one is down one is standing up um just because it coincided with that theme i think of the um i'm losing my train of thought it wouldn't be a kelly's creation video if i didn't lose my train of thought <laughs> i thought that would go good with the theme of this box so i put two of the hay barrels down and then to cover up that star at the top i glued a hay barrel to the top of it I wish now looking back that I would have put more raffia maybe all around the top and then glued the hay barrel. But these little pumpkin sticks from Dollar Tree are so cute. They're on wire that you can maneuver and I didn't even have to use hot glue. I put the wire behind the hay barrel and that held one pumpkin on top. Then I bent the wire and fit it underneath the raffia in the hay barrel to have a pumpkin on the bottom as well.
DIY number 10, using a chalkboard and a printable. This one was off Graphic Fairy as well of a vintage witch and an easel. And you can get the easels from Walmart for 97 cents. I actually had a friend give me probably about a dozen of these because she had used them for a party, so I had lucked out big time. <laughs> and I again opted to use some glue this time instead of Mod Podge. I wasn't sure how the Mod Podge would hold on that chalkboard, um, and a glue stick worked perfect. So I put a whole bunch of glue on the chalkboard and then I thought I had cut my image down but it was just a little bit too big so I do end up pulling it off and trimming it up a little bit so the black showed on either side and then I cut the bottom so that it would fit onto the board. This vintage witch is so cool looking oh my gosh I absolutely fell in love with this picture when I seen it and I knew I had to display this in my house with my little vintage items. So I, since I had cut it down, I needed to get some of that glue stick off of the chalkboard and I just used a baby wipe and trimmed the bottom as well. Then I came in with my favorite black ribbon that looks like it was threaded with white thread. I love this ribbon and I thought this would be cool to put on either side of the chalkboard um, just to kind of tie it all in. I didn't like the way the image was just a little smaller and I knew I had to trim it down because it was really bad before I trimmed it down. <laughs> If that makes any sense it just didn't fit correctly so putting this ribbon on either side really finished off this piece So for the easel, I wanted it to be a stand, but I didn't want it sitting on top of the ledge. So if you flip the easel the other way, now when you turn it around, you have a flat surface and it doesn't have that raised edge. And I just wanted to be able to attach this to the sign so that it would stand up like a picture frame. So I put the sign on the easel the way I wanted it, and then I just added a little bit of hot glue on either edge of the easel, and I attached it to the back of the chalkboard. And that way the sign now will stand upright. DIY number 10, using another one of those pumpkins. I had bought an orange one and a white one. I showed the orange one at the beginning of this video. It's taller, the white one is fatter and shorter. And if you watched my Halloween home tour, you saw I love ravens. I have a whole section dedicated to ravens. So I printed out three vintage looking raven pictures to put on this pumpkin and I'm going to do it the same exact way I did the orange. I'm going to pick the part of the image I like the best and put that on the base on the side because you're only the base of this pumpkin you're only going to see the outer edges because of that middle piece. So the part I wanted to see on the edges is where I positioned it, used my finger to make a little ridge and then trimmed it down. And I opted to use the glue stick again on this one. And I put both of those images down on the base. Then I did the same thing with the center middle piece. I picked what image I wanted in that center and used the glue stick as well to attach it to that 
And then I put hot glue on the back of the center and put it all back together for a little raven pumpkin. So I went my stash and I grabbed any ribbon or string that I had that was black and white. And I decided to take the black and white string that I get from Dollar Tree and wrap it around the stem going up, not full coverage, just to bring um, the stem up a little bit. And then I just hot glued it to the back. Then I took my striped black and white ribbon and I also took the string and I had this little mini ribbon that has um, keys on it, which I've been dying to use. <laughs> and I went, I had anything that I could use. I thought that coincided like the vintage keys with my vintage projects. And I just trimmed down this ribbon into sections and I trimmed some of that ribbon with the keys on it and kind of just made a layered bow. And I also incorporated some of that black string. I wanted just like different textures and patterns in this bow. And I really wanted it to just be layered. At the end, I also took some of that string and just made a little bow for the front of it. There's that key ribbon. Doesn't that look vintage? I think that is so cute. Um, I'm getting better at my bows. I really like the way this one turned out, which just goes to show practice makes perfect because when I first started my channel, I didn't even show me making a bow <laughs> on my channel because <laughs> I just never was happy with the way they turned out. But I have been learning from other YouTubers and just playing around and I think this really turned out cute.
So as promised, we're going to go back in time. If you're around to my age, some of these you might recognize if your parents decorated for Halloween. I recognize this creepy little witch that has a head with arms and legs sticking out of her. <laughs> This was one of those cardboard ones that you could maneuver. I also remember this witch. So I just kind of gathered a few photos that kind of brought me back in time. And I actually could remember like being little, grabbing the mask and tape and putting these on our windows and doors and yeah I just thought this would be fun to go back in time but stick around because after I'm done showing you these vintage pictures I am going to do a recap of everything I did I'm also going to show you how I decorated my bathroom with the Halloween vintage decor Don't you know that I would Cause I'm just loving 
looking I never decorate my bathroom for Halloween, but these vintage pieces just inspired me to bring them downstairs and decorate my small half bath with them. I absolutely love how they turned out. I hope you guys did too, because this was a lot of fun. Which piece was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. As always, guys, I appreciate you. I love you. And I hope you all are having a blessed and wonderful day. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button. If you want to see more before you hit that button, check out my Halloween playlist. And if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up and hit that bell for future notifications. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye y'all.